I invite you to open up the scriptures with me from Acts in that eighth chapter and let us hear the witness that comes to us, the word that is open to us. As we open up the Bible, let us open up our hearts and our spirits to hear what God is saying to us. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and he went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in the chariot, he was reading. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and he asked, Do you understand what you're reading? And he replied, How can I understand unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shear, so he does not open his mouth. And in his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. So the eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does this prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? And then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. So they were going along the road, and they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them... Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So it's about a witness. Philip being a witness and the eunuch being witness too. And what it means to be a witness. What is a witness? A witness is one who proclaims a news. One who gives some information. One who comes to deliver <coughs> something that they've seen something that they've experienced. In our tradition in the, in the church and in our faith, a witness is the one who comes to share the good news of their witness and experience of Jesus Christ and then sharing it with others, letting others know about who Christ is. And that's what Philip was doing here with the eunuch, was witnessing into the life of Jesus. Sometimes it is that we are called to be a witness as Philip was. Philip was called to go down a road that he hadn't been down before, a wilderness road. He himself hadn't known exactly the way and where he was being called to, but he went because the Spirit called him. Other times we are called to receive the news of a witness, to be witness to, because we need a witness. We need to hear the good news. Yeah, for the first time, but for times of renewal as well. So on a Sunday morning, we come to hear the witness, to hear the good news proclaimed because we need it in a place in our lives where we need to be shown a new direction, the way to go, and who we are. For God to put us together again when we feel ourselves fractured or in pieces. When we're not sure and we're no longer confident about who we are or where we are or what things are all about, we need a witness some way to hear the good news again, to come into us, to revive us, to focus us, to bring us back into a place where Philip found himself going then out in great joy. 
when the joy maybe has been taken away or we don't feel it or experience it or know the power and we feel wayward or disjointed, we need a witness, one to come to tell us the truth and to tell us the way. But yet there's a myriad of ways to share the faith. We see how Philip did it. How did he do it? But by simply beginning with the prompting of the Spirit. For the Spirit touched upon Philip a word to be given, and Philip went with it, not sure in the direction he should go in or how to do it exactly, but he just went because the Spirit prompted him. You've had those experiences of the Spirit in your life. I'm sure you have. Maybe it has been simply a notion that has come over you to make a phone call that needed to be made to somebody else and you weren't sure why, but you make the phone call and then you find out they were in a great time of need and they were needing the phone call that you just made or the visit that you had to a hospital bedside or to the home where they were. In some way, you just knew a person was in need and you reached out. The movement and the, and the, and the nudging of the Spirit in your life, it happens to us. Philip heard it, and so he went to where the Spirit called him. That's that first way that we respond, then, to being a witness. We go where the Spirit calls us to go. And then the Spirit will let us know what to do, what to say, how to be. Philip was there then, and that one came riding by in a chariot, reading out of Isaiah. And Philip responded, simply, naturally, with a question, an inquiry, wanting to know more. That's how we respond to another then. We can want to simply know more about who they are and what their needs are. That's how you witness. You find out inside of the life of the other what's going on and where their struggle is, where their need is. Ask them the questions. Ask the other. Get in touch with that energy, with that witness that has been made to you about the faith and about your relationship with Christ and why it is that you are a follower of Jesus. And out of that you share with another and you give to another because you've been moved, because you've been changed. But first you have to know what that is and remember that story and remember that experience. To be able to share it, you have to have that story there and you know what it is. You keep rehearsing it in your mind and telling it to others and remembering it for yourself so that you can give it to another. And so Philip did. And it led to that eunuch opening up his new world for himself, but then for the entire people of Ethiopia. He went back home, and there he no doubt shared what had happened to him. We're called to be the witness and to receive the gifts of Christ in our lives. When we gather around the table this morning, may we receive those gifts of the witness of Christ in our lives because everything about the faith is at this table. We want to know ever how to respond to a time and a calling and a change of a direction that we're called to go in. We look to the table here and we see how it is that Jesus led his disciples through that time and through that period. A period when a new way opened up for them. You look to the table. You look to what Jesus did on that holy night in which he shared himself broken bread, my body given for you, deep compassion, sharing with another, my blood shared for you and given for you. It's a witness that Jesus made to his disciples from the depths of his being for the benefit of the other. We're called to witness what Jesus did so that we may do likewise. This Thursday is a National Day of Prayer. We need to be in prayer for our church community here, Green Valley United Methodist, that we would be authentic witnesses, that we would know the way and follow the way. We need to be in prayer for our nation and for our president and for all of the leaders. We need to be in prayer for the people of Baltimore and all communities which are reeling in ways of unrest and violence. We need to be in prayer for the people of Nepal and people anywhere in the world who are hungry and struggling. Our prayer chapel, our chapel will be open through the day on Thursday. You'll be welcome to come anytime from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can come and you can be in prayer. There will be tools and things there for you to focus your prayers into and with. 
or you can simply come and be. If not here, wherever you find yourself on Thursday, in the car driving from one place to another, in your home at devotion times, at the desk, at your place of work, but be in prayer. An email will be put out across the congregation giving you some information and tools for about that National Day of Prayer. So look for that, or come here to the church to receive that, and it will be for you to use. We need to be a people of prayer. It's how we witness. This rock, I'll build my church. Upon this rock, I'll build my kingdom on this earth. I'll build my church. Upon this rock, this solid rock. This rock, I'll build my church. Upon this rock, I'll build my kingdom on this earth. I'll build my church. Upon this rock, this solid rock, I'll build my church. Upon this rock.